Hello YouTube, Mr. Mellon here and today I'm going to be helping you to plan your instructions that you're going to write tomorrow about how to make your medicine. Your medicines have looked amazing. Some of your ideas I saw were brilliant. Some of you have managed to get your medicine to fizz. You did a chemical reaction. It was amazing to see what you've been up to. So today we're going to be using time adverbials to explain or show when things happen. We're going to be using noun phrases to describe our ingredients. We're going to use verbs, which are doing words, to tell the reader what to do. We're going to use adverbs to describe how to do these things. So the verbs are doing words, they are things that we do, and adverbs describe how we do those things. So thinking about what you know about verbs and adverbs, we're going to have a go at sorting some words into verbs or adverbs. So let's have a look at this first word, use. Is use a doing word, a verb, or is it an adverb? Does it describe how I do something? I think it's a verb because it's a doing word. I use my pen. It's something that I do. So I'm going to put use um, into the verbs box. Have a go at this one for yourself. Feel. Is that something that you do? Is it a verb or does it describe how you do something? Is it an adverb? What do you think? I think it's a verb because it's something that I do. I feel the wood with my hand or I feel the liquid with my finger. It's something that I do. Silently, what do you think, verb or adverb? Well, it describes how I do something. I walk through the corridor silently. So it describes how I do something. So it must be an adverb. Quickly, I walk quickly through the corridor. Do you think is it a verb or an adverb? An adverb, because it describes how you do something. This one's a tricky one. Almost. I almost jumped over the wall. Do we think that's a doing word, a verb? Or does it describe how you do something, an adverb? It's an adverb. I almost jumped over the wall. Almost doesn't tell me what I did, but it describes how I did it or how close I was to doing it. So that would be an adverb. That was a tricky one. How about this one, B? I like to be careful when making my medicine. I like to be careful when making my medicine, verb or adverb? It would be a verb. I am being careful, it's something that I do. So that would be a verb. This one's a very tricky one, very. Is it a verb, is it a doing word? Or is it an adverb, it describes how we do something? What do you think? I walked very slowly. It's an adverb, it's a bonus adverb really, because slowly, I walked very slowly, slowly is an adverb, but very, adds a bit more effect to it. So it's an extra bonus adverb we can use to add effect to our adverbs. That was a tricky one. How about this one? This one's a bit easier. Thoughtfully. I opened the door thoughtfully. Adverb, because it describes how I do something. It describes how I open the door. How about this one? Said. I said it was a good idea. It's a verb, a doing word. It's something that I do want. I want to have my lunch. What do we think? A verb or adverb? Yeah, it's a verb. Oh, this one's really tricky. Two. This porridge is too hot. What do you think? It's an adverb. It doesn't describe how we do something, but it adds effect to the adjective. It describes the adjective in a bit more detail. Begin. Verb or adverb? What do you think? That's right, it's a verb. <laughs> something that we do. There we go, we got them all right. Nice work. So now we're really confident what verbs and adverbs are, we're going to have a go at watching this video about commands. Command is a type of sentence, and we're going to watch the video and find out what a command actually is. 
and what kind of sentence it is. So take a look and make sure you're listening really carefully. Oh, cut that out. Quieten down. Command sentences give instructions and tell someone to do something. They use imperative or bossy verbs, like jog on the spot. If you put a bossy verb at the beginning of a sentence, it turns it into a command. They're usually short, like tidy that up, stand straight, or jump up and down. And they can end in full stops or exclamation marks, depending on how bossy you want them to be, which I'm going to have to be right now. Stop it! Oh, honestly. There we go. So a command is a sentence that tells us what to do. It's a bossy sentence. It's used, it's used when we're telling someone to do something. They usually have an imperative verb or a bossy verb. So words which tell the reader what to do. So fetch me some biscuits. In that sentence, fetch is an imperative verb because it's telling somebody what to do. So you should also use commands when you're writing instructions, which is what we're going to do today. So let's see if we can find some imperative verbs in these sentences. Let's see if we can find some bossy words that tell the reader what to do. Put your coat on. Can you see or hear the bossy word, the imperative verb in that sentence? Put your coat on. Put, that's the word that's telling the reader what to do. It's being bossy. Take your umbrella. Which word would be the imperative verb? Which word is telling the reader what to do? I think the imperative verb is take. Because it's telling the reader what to do. It's raining. Can you see an imperative verb in it's raining? I don't think there is one. Because it's not telling the reader what to do. That sentence isn't a command. It's not being bossy. So I don't think there is an imperative verb in that sentence. How about the next one? Stop talking. Stop is an imperative verb because it's telling the reader what to do. It's being bossy. Eat your dinner. That's definitely a bossy sentence. That's a command. wonder what the imperative verb is in that command. Did you spot it? Eat. Eat is telling the reader what to do. It's being bossy. You are tired. Can you see the imperative verb in that sentence? Ah, I tried to get you. You were too clever for me. No, there is no imperative verb in that sentence because it's not a command. It's not telling the reader what to do. Go home and enjoy your day. Oh, there were two imperative verbs in there. Can you spot the two bossy words with two imperative verbs in that sentence? Go home and enjoy your day. We're telling the reader to go. And we're telling them to Brilliant. Enjoy. You found all the imperative, imperative verbs, verbs that make command sentences. Nice work, you two. So now we've looked at commands and imperative verbs, we're going to have a go at planning our instructions for tomorrow. So I'm going to have to think about what I was doing yesterday when I made my medicine. I need to use a time adverbial, which tells me when something happened. When did, when, what did, when something happened first, if it was the first thing that I did, what time adverbial could I use? Hmm, you've got some time adverbials on your sheets that, that you can use as well. Take a look at the red time adverbials at the bottom of your sheets and see if you can spot one, which would be a good one to use for the first step. Did you find it? I'm going to use the time adverbial first because it's the first step in my instructions. And I'm going to put a comma at the end. We always put a comma after a time adverbial. What was the first ingredient that I added to my medicine? I think it was the lemon juice. So for the ingredient box, I'm going to write the words lemon juice because that was my first ingredient that I added. There we go. Verb. This is the doing word. What did I do with the lemon juice? I poured the lemon juice. So what do I need to tell the reader to do? I need to tell them to pour the lemon juice. So my verb, my doing word, is going to be pour. So I'm going to write pour in the verb box. That's going to be my imperative verb, my bossy word. I need to describe how I poured the lemon juice. I need to use an adverb. I poured the lemon juice carefully. 
Okay, there we go. So the time adverb was first, the ingredient is lemon juice, the verb is pour, and the adverb is carefully. Is there another time conjunction I could use for the next one? Have a look at the sheets, see if you can see a time conjunction that I could use. Did you find one? If it's the next step, I think I could probably use the time conjunction next. So in the time adverb your box underneath, I'm going to write the word next. And I'm going to put a comma at the end because we always put a comma after a time adverbial. What did I add after the lemon juice? What did I add next? I added the vinegar. Now I need a verb, a doing word that tells the reader what to do with the vinegar. What did I do with the vinegar? I... What did I do? I tipped it. I tipped for vinegar. So my verb could be tip. I can tell my reader to tip for vinegar. But I need to tell them how to tip for vinegar. I need to describe it with an adverb. They need to tip for vinegar... Hmm... Slowly. Yeah. Tip for vinegar slowly. That sounds good. What time of verbial could I use next? Any ideas from the sheet? I'm going to use the time adverbial then. Okay, and what ingredient did I add after for vinegar? I think it was the baking soda. So I'm going to write baking soda as my next ingredient. What do I do with the baking soda? Uh, I think I sprinkled it. So I'm going to use the verb sprinkle. How did I sprinkle it? I sprinkled it quickly. That's going to be my adverb. Hmm, what could I add next? What time conjunction could I use next for my plan? Perhaps you can have a look for yourself. What did you think? It was a difficult choice, but I'm going to use after that. So after that is going to be my time adverbial. And again, I'm going to put a comma at the end. What did I add after the baking soda? I added... Ah, the curry powder. So I'm using my work that I did yesterday to help me as well, to help me jog my memory. After that, I did curry powder. What verb could I use to tell me how I added the curry powder? Well, I could just use the verb add. But I do need to use an adverb to describe how I added the curry powder. How did I add it? What adverb could I use? I could use quickly, actually. Quickly added the curry powder. Hmm, which one could I use next? What time adverbial? I'm going to use now. When I added the pepper. What did I do with the pepper? Hmm, can I think of a verb? I've already used added, I've already used sprinkled, I've already used, I've already used tip. I need to think really hard about what I did with the pepper. Oh, I know a good verb that I could use. If I threw it in, so I could tell the reader to throw in the pepper. But I need to describe how they should throw it in as well. I need to write an adverb rapidly. So that leaves me with my last part or my final part of my instructions. I'm going to use the time adverbial finally to finish it off. I need to tell my reader what to do. Now all the ingredients are added. So I'm going to write the word mixture. I need to tell my reader what to do with the mixture. What did I do with the mixture once I added my ingredients? I stirred it. So I need to tell the reader to stir the mixture. I need to give them an adverb to describe how to stir it as well. Hard. They need to stir the mixture hard. So there we go. We've used time adverbials, we've used verbs, and we've used adverbs. Sometimes time adverbials might be called time conjunctions as well. But there is something missing. I haven't used any noun phrases. So to make my noun phrases, I'm going to use some adjectives to describe the ingredients. You don't have to do this step, but if you fancy an extra challenge, give this a go. 
Let's have a look at the curry powder. Could I use an adjective to describe the curry powder? What was the curry powder like? Oh, it was spicy. So I could write spicy curry powder. There's my noun phrase. Is there another ingredient I could describe? How about the lemon juice? It was sour. I could write sour lemon juice. That's another noun phrase. So if you fancy an actual challenge, have a go at using some adjectives to describe your ingredients to make your noun phrases. I can't wait to see your plans and I'm looking forward to seeing the work that you do today. Keep up the great work and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye for now.